Mounting Guidelines for Geoplast Underground Storage Tank In the following video, you can see everything worth knowing about the installation of the Geoplast Underground Storage Tank. Part 1 – Planning Please note that an exact planning is a precondition for a successful operation of a geotank. First of all, the size of the geotank has to be determined. This depends on the required pellets quantity for the building and for how long the building shall be heated with one delivery of pellets. The geotank is calculated optimally, if one filling lasts for a minimum of 6 but a maximum of 18 months. The next planning step is to find the best place for the mounting of the geotank in the environment of the building. It has to be considered how far your chosen pellet boiler can transport the pellets. The maximum transport length is 15 meters. Also, the vertical height difference has to be considered. How far these distances can be, you can find out from the boiler manufacturer's instructions. Furthermore, the pellet supplier has to have an access to the geotank. The maximum distance between the pellet truck and the geotank should not exceed 15 meters so that the geotank can be filled with a maximum filling pressure of 0.2 bar. The following planning step is especially important. What is the ground like where the geotank should be brought in? Is the ground permeable to water like most gravel grounds? Or is the ground water tight, which appears mostly with cohesive loamy or clayey grounds? Why is it necessary to pay that much attention to this topic already in the planning phase? Having permeable ground, the water is able to drain away unresisted. Therefore, the geotank is not exposed to any upwelling. Having loamy or clayey ground, the water can't drain away. It impounds. With increasing water level, the upwelling is getting stronger until the geotank is finally pressed out from its mounting position. To avoid such situations, a drainage installation in the building pit is necessary, having cohesive or clayey ground. Either like presented here, the water can flow off over a drainage pipe into a sewer, or it must be exhausted by using a pump. Having a hillside situation, the existing ground pressure has to be detected through a retaining wall, or by fully encasing the geotank with concrete. Apply the concrete step by step in layers of 50 centimeters to avoid upwelling of the tank on the concrete. The next layer of concrete may only be filled in after the previous layer has already solidified. By the use of special concrete admixtures, such as quick setting cement binders or accelerating admixtures, the waiting time will be shortened significantly. According to the construction, the lid of the manhole pit is not sealed hermetically. The inside of the manhole pit is only splash water resistant, but must not be over flooded. As great floods of water may appear with heavy rains or on hillside situations, the water must be diverted from the manhole pit. This can be achieved by a flood protection made of a concrete wedge or by any other equal construction. For the same reason, the geotank must be mounted at the highest point of an uneven ground. Part 2. Mounting of the geotank. To unload the tank from the truck without damages, two tension belts must be attached. One in the upper and one in the lower area of the tank. Afterwards, they must be tied together with another belt. With the help of this newly generated loop, the excavator or loading crane is able to unload the geotank from the truck. Before mounting the geotank, it should be examined for possible damages as a result of transportation. In case of any damages at this stage, especially cracks and holes in the outer skin of the tank, it may not be mounted.
The following components must be included in the delivery. Geotank with manhole pit. Air control valve. ABS control. Manual. And if ordered, a filling level indicator. Parts already mounted in the manhole pit are extraction unit, motor, gear unit, and filling system. The correct basis of the geotank is a base plate made of concrete with a thickness of approximately 15 centimeters, which is reinforced with a steel mesh. The level of the base plate must be calibrated exactly to avoid that the drip edge of the built-in tank is not positioned too deep and that the manhole pit is not going to be over flooded in case of a hillside situation. For lifting the tank into the building pit, the tension belts must be attached to the geotank again. One tension belt has to be fastened to the upper recess of the tank. Another belt is threaded as a loop. With help of this loop, the excavator can lift the tank and lower it into the building pit. While lowering the geotank, it is important to ensure that the tank does not hit the wall of the building pit, thereby detaching stones. Resting on the base plate, the stones could damage the tank. Before lowering the geotank completely, the service opening for suction and return air hoses has to be positioned into the correct direction towards the building. Should a pump shaft be necessary due to watertight ground, it should be assembled with a distance of about 50 centimeters to the geotank before backfilling the building pit. Like shown in the video, you can use a drainage tube with permanent small openings, or you take an ordinary sewer pipe. The bore of the pipe depends on the used immersion pump. To ensure a steady access of water into the sewer pipe, it is necessary to drill holes on the lower end of the pipe. If a drainage is necessary, Use only rounded grain gravel in the size of 10 to 30 millimeters for backfilling. Filling materials with fines, like sand, could damage your installed pump. If a drainage is not necessary, cable sand can also be used for backfilling. In no case should excavated material or sharp-edged crushed stones be used. The backfilling has to be accomplished in layers of about 50 centimeters, which have to be compacted afterwards. Compaction may only take place with a hand masher or by using your feet, but in no case with a mechanical compressor. The subsequent instructions must always be kept in mind. Do not fill the tank with water for pressure compensation. Do not use the excavation material for backfilling. Do not use mechanical compactors. Rounded grain gravel or sand should be backfilled only up to the upper rib of the geotank. The remaining top area, about 10 centimeters, is filled again with concrete. The geotank has a so-called residual water discharge. This helps to drain off the splash water which gets into the manhole pit during filling with opened cover in the rain or snowfall. Additionally, a hose or a pipe with a diameter of one inch, which leads into a sewer or a drainage shaft, has to be attached to the residual water discharge. It must be ensured that water can drain off easily at any time. We hope that we could answer all of your questions concerning the mounting of a Geoplast underground storage tank. Should you require further information, please visit our homepage.